Uh, I guess it was last night that Extra Bulla, friend of the show, messaged me a video that said uh, Jimmy Dore had spoken at the UN. And because Extra Bulla sent it to me, I assumed it was either a prank or a joke or like one of the, you know, deep fake uh, videos that are going out there. Because we know our friend Warren uh, has plenty of jokes and tricks up his sleeve, but it looked pretty real. And then. I started seeing tweets surface, and then finally uh, this morning, Steph tweeted out a video, and then Jimmy tweeted out a video. So apparently, yes, Jimmy Dore was invited to speak remotely uh, to the United Nations Security Council on the one-year anniversary of the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline. His address lasted about 10 minutes. Uh, we have the first few minutes here, so let's give this a look. I now give the floor to Mr. Jimmy Dore. Greetings, Mr. President, distinguished members of the council. I'm here to speak today about the attack on the Nord Stream pipeline that took place one year ago on September 26, 2022. Four explosions ruptured the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines that carried natural gas from Russia to Europe. It was the biggest act of industrial sabotage in human history severing the main artery for energy from Russia to Germany, cheap energy that was critical to maintaining Germany's industrial base. We have heard every cockamamie and ridiculous theory on how this happened. Now, you don't need to be a genius investigative reporter to figure out who was the culprit of the Nord Stream attack. Incredibly, most Western news outlets ignore the fact that the president of the United States Joe Biden himself announced on February 9th, 2022, that he would, in fact, attack the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, saying, and I quote, if Russia invades Ukraine, tanks crossing the border again, there will no longer be a Nord Stream 2 pipeline. We will bring an end to it. I promise you, we will be able to do it. Now, once again, not to interrupt, we'll let the rest of this play in just a second. February 9th, 2022, two weeks prior to the invasion, you have an advance statement by Joe Biden himself saying exactly what he just said. Even with that pre-admission of guilt from the president of the United States, most of the Western press remained baffled as to who could have pulled off the greatest act of echo terrorism in history. Well, luckily, we don't have to rely on my interpretation of President Biden's clear threat to attack the pipelines. We actually have Seymour Hersh, a genius investigative reporter with impeccable reputation and credentials, who reported that in June of 2022, United States Navy divers operating under the cover of a widely publicized summer NATO exercise known as Ball Tops 22, planted the remotely triggered explosives that three months later destroyed three of the four Nord Stream pipelines, according to a source with direct knowledge of the operational planning. And like all criminals, the perpetrators could not contain their elation over committing the crime. Shortly after the attack, many high-ranking U.S. officials could not help but brag about their achievements and expressed multiple times how they were proud of being able to put an end to the pipelines. Under Secretary of State Victoria Newland said, I am, and I think the administration is, very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like to say, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. United, the United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, called it a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy. Now, keep in mind, before I play the rest of this, we have a, a, about one minute left. The initial reaction from the press, the initial official story, was not one of confusion. Hmm, who could have done this? Originally, we said Russia did it. Don't forget. So at the right. same time, you had <laughs> Newland and Blinken celebrating this as a defeat for russia the media was saying well the russians must have blown up their own pipeline all right here we go we got one more minute you have to be a paid liar to not acknowledge the hand of the united states in carrying out these attacks not only did president biden declare he would do this but high-ranking u.s officials have said similar things for years 
We can look to 2014 when former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice stated that over the long run, you simply want to change the structure of energy dependence. You want to depend more on North American energy platforms, which is what this is really all about an economic war between the West and Russia in order to fill the pockets of rapacious capitalists who actually pull the strings of the U.S. government and dictate foreign policy. All right. So that was about the first four minutes. Like I said, he goes on for about seven minutes more. I recommend that you guys all watch the same thing. It's on Jimmy's feed. It's on Steph's feed. And it's also several places on YouTube now. But it's just amazing how um, this is not a single issue on which to evaluate Joe Biden. Um, you know, Jimmy has called him an eco-terrorist. Nick Cruz has called him an eco-terrorist. Th th that's what this was. I mean, this, <laughs> this was a terrorist act. This was an act of war against our own NATO ally. Germany is a NATO ally. Ukraine is not. So how does attacking the critical infrastructure of an official ally in order to isolate them from a critical supplier of a vital resource and therefore make them more dependent on more expensive resources from other countries, Western countries, how does that not constitute an act of war? That's eco-terrorism, that's economic terrorism. I mean, just that single deed alone should have everybody with any claim to any left bona fides whatsoever immediately disqualify Joe Biden. And then you got these fucking clowns running around. Well, he gave a good general counsel on the NLRB. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what the, what the fuck are you talking about? How is this not the issue of Paramount import? Um, it's just insane. And, you know, I didn't even realize that was one year ago. But, yeah, one year ago, one year from now, the story went from, well, the Russians did it to radio silence, right? And, and that's how you know the Russians didn't do it right away. Because if, they, if the media actually felt the Russians did it, they would have kept saying the Russians You'd did never it. Heard the end of it. You would have never heard the end of it if they actually yeah. believed the Russians did it. Russia rigging an election that they didn't rig. <laughs> Exactly. For three years, they carry on about Russia rigging an election that they didn't rig. They, they, they're still talking about that eight years later. And what, a couple weeks after the destruction of the Nord Stream, they, they go from, well, Russia did it to no comments to Ukraine did it. But they were rogue Ukrainian actors with no connection to the Ukrainian government. And certainly the United States had no knowledge of it. That's the official story now. I mean, how unbelievably gullible do you have to be to buy any of that? But this just also proves... You, Yuri, you have fishing boat, yes? <laughs> right, exactly. I have great idea. I have old scuba set. We blow a pipeline tomorrow. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, that's literally what you would have to believe in order to buy that narrative. That, yeah, some rogue Ukrainians did it. Uh, but the U.S. Uh, nor Ukraine uh, had any direct knowledge um, well, well we, you made a good point we were talking about this well if ukraine blew up the pipeline uh, germany is in nato and they're not isn't that ukraine committing an act of war against nato that's why they have to frame it as they were ukrainians but non-governmental actors right because if they were governmental actors that's technically an act of war yes just as you know look ukraine is not a nato ally Right. So if Russia attacked Poland, as Ukraine tried to blame them for, right, when that missile landed in Poland and Ukraine said Russia did it. And then we find out that Ukraine actually did it. Right. Um, if Russia did attack Poland, that would be an act of war against NATO because Poland is a NATO country. And so, yes, in that case, we would have to say that that was an act of war. Uh, well, same thing here. Germany is a NATO country. So an attack on their infrastructure uh, is, is of course, an act of war. And if Ukraine did it, then that should make Ukraine not only disqualified from joining NATO, now they are an enemy of NATO, right? And right. so it just right. it makes no sense. But of course, look, 
I don't think, look, the idea that Ukraine did it is also fucking bullshit. <laughs> we obviously did it. Joe Biden said two weeks before. He that, said we were going to do it. We were going to do it. Right. So to even to even take seriously that the, the Ukrainian government did it or the Ukrainian military did it is nonsense. Obviously, we did it. That's the most obvious thing in the world. And good on him for calling that out. Um, it was very, very well done. Um, and yeah, I encourage everybody to watch the whole thing. Yeah. So I pulled, I pulled up this, uh, very famous quote from 1984, because it seems particularly relevant around this particular issue. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. That's what you really see here, right? It is so fucking obvious that the media narrative that's why they kept having to change it because it's so it 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 made so little sense it was causing too much cognitive dissonance even amongst their audience of lobotomized uh lips so that they changed it to ukrainian rogue actors because the russian angle just because of what it cost russia it just they couldn't sustain it, right? Or they felt they couldn't they couldn't sustain that, even with their completely incurious audience. So then they shifted to these Ukrainian rogue actors. And as you point out, the way they've mostly approached it is not to talk about it. And you know, you you mention how these people who are talking about the NLRB, and that's why you've got to back Joe Biden, they don't talk about this. Well, you know what? The media makes it really easy for them not to talk about it because there's alternative media and there's alternative media. Alternative media is the gray zone where they're going to talk about this shit. They're going to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. That's exactly the purpose of alternative media. And then you have people who couldn't or didn't want to try to get ahead through the normal corporate media channels because there's a lot of competition in that lane and decided they could actually make more money and run their own thing if they go on youtube and present themselves as some kind of alternative media but that's not alternative media and that's why their conversation about current events is framed within a similar boundary right they there are places they're not gonna go They're not going to really emphasize that. They only track what the corporate media is emphasizing and here and there give you a little bit of critique of the media to, to, to maintain the notion that they're really different, but they're fundamentally not, as you can see from commentators who are running around talking about how you have to vote for Joe Biden because of the NLRB and never fucking mention the Nord Stream pipeline. Please clap.